All right, so here we are in our Pro Tools session. First thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to show my workspace browser so that way I can actually go and find my audio samples drive. What we're going to take a look at today is trying to extrapolate tempo in order to create a new session. Now it's really easy in Pro Tools to do a tempo change anytime you want within the session right up here in our tempo ruler. If you're not seeing the tempo ruler, you can always click this little button right here so that way you can show and hide all the different rulers that you have available to you. Nonetheless, if you click this little plus right here, it will allow you to type in a location, meaning a point in time, and a new tempo. Now you can do this over and over again. If your song has tempo changes that happen throughout, you can just keep on adding tempo changes at new locations. and repeat this process over and over. Notice how now we have a tempo change right here at the very beginning of our session and another one right here at measure seven where we typed it in. Let's zoom in real quick to see that. Notice there it is. So you can keep on repeating this process. Now this only works if you already know the tempo of a song you intend on working with. What if you don't know the tempo, but you have some sort of a reference, like for instance, a lot of people use loops. You might hear a loop that is inspiring, but you're not necessarily intending on using the loop per se, but you like the tempo, the groove that it's got going on. So let's go ahead and undo these tempo changes. That was how easy that was. I'm going to show my workspace browser, because that will give me access to all my different hard drives. And I have a hard drive here for all my audio samples. So let's go into one of the folders. Notice that anytime that you're looking at audio files within your DigiDesign database environment, <clears throat> you're going to have a waveform column where you can see a waveform representation and this little speaker icon that lets you, <laughs> lets you audition the audio files within this browser. So <clears throat> let's just uh, try to find an audio file that seems kind of cool and then we'll bring that into our session and try to figure out what tempo it's at. Okay, that seems pretty cool. So if you want to bring this into your session, like with any audio file, from your browser environment, just simply drag it to your tracks column in your edit window, and it instantly creates a new audio file, new audio file track, and imports that audio file directly to the beginning of the session, and it does all of the sample rate and bit depth conversion that it needs to to make sure that it's perfectly compatible with the session. So now we have this file here in our session. We just hit play to audition it. Okay, so like most sample libraries, this is kind of roughly cut. It doesn't start at the absolute beginning, it doesn't end at the absolute end, and this is where you're going to have to step in and do a little bit of work here. Because in order for us to calculate tempo in, in Pro Tools, as with any session, um, any DAW, you have to have some, some boundaries. So <clears throat> first thing you're going to want to do is to isolate a perfect loop from within this, this audio file. So if you just listen to it again, it should start on a downbeat for the most part. All right, so if you're listening along, we can tell that it kind of starts here. Let's go into slip mode to make all these changes so that way we have freehand selection. It kind of starts here and ends here. <clears throat> Let's just do a rough audition again. All right, notice how it's loop playing back on itself, my selection. That's because of a feature here in the options menu called loop playback. It's really handy when you're doing these kind of, this kind of work. Okay, now that's just a rough selection. Best thing to always do is to be precise. Uh, zoom into your selection. Now notice how my selection actually starts a little bit ahead of the uh, what is probably the kick drum on the downbeat right here. So if you hold down shift on your keyboard, and click and drag with your mouse, you can modify the selection. Make sure that it starts where you want it to. And now you probably want to do the same thing for the end of the selection, so that way it doesn't have a, a skip in the loop. So if you just hit your left arrow on the keyboard, it'll take you to the end of the selection. We're going to do the same thing here. Hold down Shift, click and drag, 
Now, always audition before you start making any splices, before you do anything like this. Always listen. Um, this is music after all, and you do have to use your ears, not just your eyes. All right, so if we, so if we zoom out, seems like that selection that we have starts and ends on a downbeat, so we would have a perfect measure loop. Now we're going to use a function in Pro Tools called Trim, found under the Edit menu, called Trim Region to Selection. And that just essentially cuts out everything around the selection so that all that we're left with now is just that perfect loop region. And we're going to move this region with the Grabber tool to the very, very beginning of the session that we have. Now, you know by listening to this that it's one measure long, because you can count off in your head. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so if that's the case, and if the very, very beginning of our session is measure one beat one, the end of this region should be at measure two beat one, because that would mean that it's one measure. But notice that using the default tempo of Pro Tools, as with any DAW and any sequencer, it always goes to 120 BPM. Well, obviously, based on that, if we look at our selection indicators here, it tells us that our selection starts at measure 1 beat 1, ends at measure 2 beat 2, sub beat 4, 28. And that's obviously wrong, because it should end at measure 2 beat 1, meaning that that would be a perfect measure what we're hearing with our ears. So we're going to use a feature in Pro Tools called Identify Beat. It's found under the Event menu. And all that you do with Identify Beat is tell it where your selection starts. Notice that one's easy right now because it starts at measure 1 beat 1. And where your selection should end. It should end at measure 2 beat 1 if it's one measure long. Now this would be the same thing if you had a 2 or 3 or 4 measure long loop. If you had a 2 measure long loop, it'd start at measure 1 beat 1 and end at measure 3 beat 1. So you type in the according end position. Now when we hit OK, notice in my tempo ruler, it recalculated the tempo of the session to be 87.2346. It's uh, kind of precise. But if we look at our selection indicators and the bar and beat ruler here at the top, notice that this selection starts at measure 1 beat 1 and ends at measure 2 beat 1, exactly one measure long, which is what we're hearing in the audio. Now, for all practical purposes, this track can be gotten rid of because now that you have a tempo all that you really need to start creating new music is a click track and you can easily create a click track from the track menu by going to create click track now you do have some click preferences if you want under the setup menu called click and count off when do you want it to click during play and record during record only or only during the count off and when do you want the count off to happen which in my case is set to only during record and to only give me one measure of count off. All right, so let's get rid of this. Now, if I were to actually record some new audio, or MIDI for that matter of fact, oops, let's set the appropriate input. You're gonna hear a count off and a click. And notice it's at the tempo that was identified by the audio region that we brought into the session. All right, I hope this helps and clears a few things up and gets you on the road to making music. In the next installment, we'll be taking a look at how to bring in an audio region and conform it to the tempo of a pre-existing session. We'll kind of work the other way around. Hope to see you soon.